Hi gang, Mr. G here. Uh, today we have a topic that many of you have asked me about in the past, and I know you're going to find this one interesting. Uh, today is Monday, March 30th, and it's day 12 of my own self-quarantine during the coronavirus uh, outbreak. And um, I think it's about day 10 or so for the goatee experiment. So everything seems to be going fine on those fronts so far. And I hope things are going fine for you and that you and your family are staying safe and uh, pitching in in this crisis and staying home and doing all the things that um, are best for everyone. Um, before we get started on this topic today, um, I want to remind you that we're hoping to get as many of the testimonial videos from you as possible by this Friday, April 3rd. Um, we'd like to use these testimonials for a fundraising project that we have going. And um, so the more that we uh, get, the, the more fundraising potential that we have. And we're going to need that coming up here soon. So uh, we hope that all of you can participate, or at least as many of you as possible um, will participate in that. If you want more information about it, the third video in this series was on that topic of, of the specifications for that video. So thank you for that. I also want to preface this video by saying that these videos uh, that we're making in this series um, are primarily for our players in Steel Magic Northwest, but we have plenty of other subscribers to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page and our Instagram page, and you're all welcome to, to enjoy these videos with us. Um, today's topic is rather scientific, and so um, I, may, I may slow down a little bit in a couple of places just to make sure that the point is made for some of our younger players. Today's topic is how a steel pan gets tuned. And I want to be very clear that I'm not teaching how to tune a steel pan in this video. I am not a professional tuner. I'm a battlefield tuner. I've had a few weeks of training spread out over, you know, three decades or more. And so, you know, my experience uh, in this, I've built a few pans and I've, I've tuned a few and like I said, I'm a battlefield tuner. I can take an instrument that's been dropped and I can bring it back into usable shape, but it takes a real professional who does this um, day in and day out for years in order to really create and, and maintain a fine instrument. So um, what I'm trying to do today is to help you understand what it is that a professional tuner is trying to do with their tools. I have only a few of the very basic tools that steel pan tuners use um, and builders. And you know, these are some of my tools over here that I've had for years. I've got a, a two pound, sorry, an eight pound sledge and a, I'm not sure how much that is. And my 32 ounce, my favorite 32 ounce hammer here. And I think this is a 16 or a 24 ounce hammer here. And um, you know, these, these tools are specially ground down so that they don't leave sharp marks on the pan and so forth. And I have a few, a few other tools that I'll show you. A professional tuner has many more types of hammers and little tools that they use in their day-to-day -day work to maintain and make our instruments sound great. So um, I just want to make sure that you keep that in perspective as, as you watch this video. Well, I need to demonstrate a couple of really, really basic principles about the steel pan and what makes the steel pan sound the way it does. And in order to do that, we're going to need to go down on the floor. Meet me down there. Thanks for meeting me down here. Now, what I have here is the bottom of an oil barrel, and it's just been sunk into a bowl here. There's no uh, discernible notes in there right now. It's just a very random sound. Now, some of you Edmonds kids and even some kids down in Kent, you've seen me with this thing before and um, doing my favorite little party tricks on it. But today I'm just going to create one note just to demonstrate the various ways that hammering on the metal will affect the pitch. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to pop up a note that's called popping up. I'm going to pop up a note of a certain size and you'll hear the pitch go down the larger I make that bubble. Well, that sounds pretty good. All right, we have our note, and you can see it there in the light, it looks like. That's our note right there. 
Now, there are two things that are creating that note. One is the size of the bubble that I just created, and the other is the tension that the metal is in, in the middle of the bubble. And I can manipulate both of those two things. I can make the, the bubble smaller by going around the outside with my hammer here, and I can, I can raise the pitch. Let's try that. Right, so it's a much smaller bubble now. I can also manipulate it by relaxing the metal that's in there. It's under high stress right now. It's very stretched across here. So if I hammer towards the middle and relax the metal, it should go down a little bit. Doesn't always, but let's find out. All right, you can hear it going down just a little bit as I do that. I can also do the opposite moves from the bottom. I can make the bubble bigger like I did the first time by, by pounding it out from the outside. Or I could touch, uh, hit the hammer in the middle of that bubble and, and stretch that metal even more. And as I stretch it, you'll hear the pitch go up. You should hear the pitch go up. So I have four different ways of creating what's called the fundamental pitch. Fundamental pitch. That is the note that you are thinking of when you hear that note. That is the, the, the primary, most fundamental note that you hear. It's called the fundamental pitch. But there's more to this business, and for that, we need to go over to the piano. So do you guys remember from the second video uh, on the history of the steel pan, that when I was a kid, um, the, there was a development in the creation of steel pans where they were beginning to tune harmonics into the steel pans. And I wanted to explain what harmonics are. Harmonics naturally occur in stringed instruments and wind instruments, and um, a piano is a type of stringed instrument, so it's a good thing to, to demonstrate on. Brass players especially have to know about harmonics. And um, most string players eventually learn what harmonics are on their instrument as well. So harmonics naturally occur on most instruments, but they don't naturally occur on the steel pan. And so it took a little bit of, um, maybe it was a little bit of luck, but also a little bit of uh, analysis of what made that particular note sound good for them to realize that there were harmonics that needed to be tuned into each note on the steel pan in order to make it sound right. And so, what are harmonics? Well, I have here, um, I've chosen C3. That's the, the C below middle C to demonstrate this. Now this note here, C3 is the fundamental pitch. But the string doesn't just vibrate as one big thing. The string is also vibrating in half, and in thirds, and in fourths, and fifths, and so on. And I can demonstrate that this way. If I touch my finger exactly in the middle of that string, you're not gonna hear, you're not gonna hear C3. You're gonna hear the first harmonic. There's a series of harmonics. You're gonna hear the first one, and that is, C4, an octave higher. So hear the difference? My finger is lightly touching the string exactly halfway. And so the half the length of the string or half the mass makes it one octave higher. Now if I do a third of the length of the string, I get the next harmonic. And that is should be about right here. The next harmonic is an octave and a fifth. That, that's, those are inter, called intervals in music, but it's a, it's a distance between pitches. So now the second harmonic is an octave and a fifth. So here's the original pitch, and there's the harmonic. Hear that? If I go all the way to a fourth, of the length of the string, I get the third harmonic, and that is two full octaves above the fundamental. Okay. 
it's up there. So, although most of what you hear is the fundamental pitch, there are also harmonics in the notes that you hear. So how does that, oh, hi. So how does that apply to the steel pan? Well, I brought, I brought my pan snowflake over here to show this to you. Um, this is an invader pan. This is not a circle of fifths pan. And it has a nice big F sharp right in the middle of the, of the barrel here. Right there is my F sharp. And I, I use this note a lot to demonstrate this because of its shape and how well it behaves. So um, this is my F sharp. And you probably hear that F sharp, the fundamental pitch, very nicely. It's F sharp four. So that's the fundamental pitch that's created by the main bubble itself. But you notice it's oval. And along this long axis, the, the long di dimension of this note, they've tuned in the first harmonic, which is an octave higher. And I can demonstrate that by holding my finger in the middle of this, just in, kind of in the way that I held my finger in the middle over there. It's a little different, but here is F sharp, by the way. The, the F sharp that you're gonna hear is F sharp, uh, what is that, F sharp five. So here's F sharp five. contained within F sharp four. So F sharp four is vibrating, and then along this distance here, it's vibrating twice as fast, like half the string. And then going this direction on the short dimension, we should hear either the second harmonic or the third harmonic. Some tuners tune different notes in different ways, but as long as there's a harmonic there, it's going to ring. And so uh, let's, I believe that this is the second harmonic, which would be an octave and a fifth. And it should sound, we should hear this note. That note is C sharp. So we should hear that C sharp six within this F sharp four. Okay, and here is F sharp five, and here, I hope the mics are picking that up. But there's very clearly the second harmonic running this way. Again, they don't naturally occur. The tuners have to tune them in and they'll use glancing blows to go one way or the other in order to stretch or, or relax the metal in, in certain directions. It's an amazing balancing act that they perform. Okay, so I have here a pan. This is um, an individually owned pan by one of our adult players, Cindy. And Cindy acquired this instrument from an old college buddy of mine, by coincidence. Um, he had said that this instrument had not been played and hadn't really been out of the case in many years. And so this was a good candidate for an instrument that somebody like myself could improve. Now, in order for this to really be taken to the next level, it would require a professional tuner but um, I'm good enough that I can probably help this instrument some, and that's what I'm gonna to try to do. So, I've chosen the Ds. And there's room for improvement there, and I can show that to you on the uh, strobe tuner. Now, this is a very inexpensive piece of software um, version of, of a strobe tuner that I have, but a strobe tuner is a tool that tuners use to analyze the pitch that they're hearing. Now I have this one set to listen to D6. And this is D6. And you can see that as I play, I don't, hopefully you can see that, as I play, this little display here either, either stays put or it moves up or it moves down a little bit. And so if it moves up, it's showing that it's sharp. And if it moves down, it's showing that it's flat. And there's another readout in here that says by how many little increments, uh, it's flat or sharp. So I can either look at the screen or I can look down here and I can see a negative or a positive number. So for this note, it says it's only two cents sharp. And so I'm gonna say that that's good. I'm not gonna mess with that because um, it's way up there. It's a really high note. And really what I wanna make sure that is happening here is that is that the next octave lower has a harmonic that sort of matches that. So um, now we're gonna go down to D5. That was D6, and here we're gonna go down an octave. 
to D5. And I'm going to use this to kind of cover up the other Ds so that they're not ringing so much. And that way I can sort of hear just the D5. You might be able to see that thing as sort of crawls down as I, as I play. Which tells me that the fundamental pitch of that D5 is low and I need to bring it up. Now, I also want to listen to the harmonic that's in that to determine whether the harmonic needs to be going up or down or whether it needs to stay put because that'll affect where I hit this note. Okay, here's D6 again, but this time I'm just listening for the D6 that's in this particular note. It's showing that that's just a little flat too, just a little bit. So if I tighten up this note by, by tightening up that harmonic, it might also affect the fundamental in a good way as well, because that the fundamental was flat as well. I'm going to try to tighten it up on that axis there, that long axis, just to see if it can raise the, the, both the harmonic, the first harmonic, and the fundamental at the same time. That's really close now. So I'm going to leave that where that is, and now I'm going to check the, the lowest note. This is, um, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to check that harmonic, which should be, wow, that's almost perfect, dead on, just one cent flat, so good enough for me. And I'm, now I'm going to check the fundamental pitch on that, and that's D4. You see it's crawling just a little bit low, so um, I'm going to try to tighten that note up, and I don't want to, I don't want to affect that harmonic any. So I'm going to go into these corners here, because the corners are kind of neutral spaces. You can kind of tighten up in the corners a little bit, and it, it will have less of an impact on the harmonics. You can see now that it's basically staying still and I'm, I'm, I'm mostly on and so I'm not going to do anything more with this. A professional tuner would do many more things to this to improve the sound um, and its responsiveness to the stick and so forth. I don't have those skills. So this was just a demonstration of the basics of how they tune an instrument and so I'm not going to go any further because I'll uh, start messing up if I do, right? So I'm very careful not to not to tune anything that I don't feel confident tuning. Anyway, it's a fascinating world. The, the, the science behind it is, amaz is amazing, and I have the utmost respect for the people who tune and build these instruments and create them and maintain them. Um, they really know what they're doing, and they, all of the ones that, who I know work every single day and, and invent new techniques and invent new tools and all kinds of stuff. So this instrument is young enough that Techniques for this are still evolving every day, and it's just fascinating. So uh, respect your tuner and be nice to them because they know what they're doing. Well, uh, I'm going to wrap it up today with one more reminder to get your um, testimonial videos done and um, send those in to us, hopefully by this Friday, Friday, April 3rd. The next video that I'm going to make uh, for you is uh, going to be a little fun. It's, it's going to be fun for me anyway. Several of you have asked me in the past how I got involved with the steel pan, and there's kind of a cool story behind it. So I'm going to share that story with you next time. And um, I guess that's it. So for now, I'm just going to say ciao. See you later. Be safe.